Hello, and welcome to Witchy Woman Podcast. I am your host, Danae Sweet, and this is episode 102. Oh my gosh. I hope you guys have had a wonderful holiday season. I was worried that I'd feel like weird not doing the podcast for last week. And yeah, I felt weird. I felt guilty for taking time off. But oh my god, I needed it. So thank you guys for being so understanding and letting me have a little bit of time just to kind of chill, regroup, (laughs) and um, spend some time with my family. I really, really enjoyed it. We went... um, to a little cabin not too far from here a few hours it was next to a a state park so we were able to like go do outside things and be completely isolated because you know covid um and it was just great i really appreciate um being able and having the privilege to be able to go do something like that i was so grateful for that time it really helped me reset i hope that you guys had some kind of moment of peace um, going into the new year, I hope that you are doing well, that you have your health, um, and that you feel supported. That is like, I was trying to think of like, what my, what my wishes for this next year would be, which I don't try to set goals anymore, as far as like, having a word of the year, or doing some kind of like, thing like that because I swear to god that always comes, bites me in the ass. Like one year I was like, I want clarity, and then like, Everybody in my life that I, you know, not everybody, let me rephrase that. Not everybody in my life turned out to be assholes, but um, a a vast majority of people I thought were close to me actually were not. And it was a big eye opener. I had a lot of clarity that year, but it was very, very hard. (laughs) So I don't, I don't do a year, a word of the year, but I, I do think about what I want for the world. I want freaking peace everybody just be kind to one another and that we all can feel supported and have someone to support us as we support others so that's what I want for everybody and I hope that you get it today we are talking about money magic abundance prosperity how to get yours right but first I wanted to start something new on the podcast I thought I would draw a card of the week every episode just to kind of give you guys like a a general, hey, this is what we should, you know, look out for or be mindful of this week. So I'm actually drawing from the Spellcasting Oracle deck uh, cards. I love these cards. Um, My tarot cards have been in timeout for like a fucking year and I don't think they'll ever come out. So I'm sticking to Oracle cards. Not that I think they're like any gentler with me anymore. Honestly, I'm too lazy. I don't want to do tarot. I just want to do my intuitive readings off of these cards instead. (laughs) So yeah, another lazy witch quality of me. Okay, so let me cut these a couple times. Okay, the card of the week. Lighten your load. It is this person bent over with like the literally the earth on their back and they're holding the freaking moon or the sun or something it's a bright celestial thing basically this card means it's okay to say no (laughs) you need to lighten your load you're um giving out more than you're getting in you're burning the candle at both ends you need to look at your life this week and go okay what are some things that really don't need to be addressed this week how can I lighten my load this week so that my mental health is better so that my life in generally is better and I don't mean like procrastinating but like for me I go through my life and I'm like I have to have this done by this time this day and I don't need to have the floor swept by nine o'clock on Wednesday or Thursday or whatever it is like it'll get done when it gets done because sometimes I have things that are more important like um doing the podcast uh writing in my book, um, cooking dinner for Brad and myself, um, spending time with my family. There are things to me that are more important and I'm learning slowly that these things can be rescheduled. Be like, I don't have to do this this week. It's not going to affect my life at all if I don't go outside and, you know, pick weeds in December. That's literally something I was like, ooh, I need to go outside and make sure the sidewalks are clean and all the weeds that grew in that I didn't take care of I should pull up. Dude, that does not need to be done this week or even next week. Honestly, 
it's freaking winter and it's mostly going to be covered by like snow and ice and I might as well just wait until it warms up and I can actually pull that stuff out of loose dirt not frozen dirt <laughs> so you get what I mean lighten your load sometimes the most powerful statement we can say is no <laughs> no I don't have time to do that um no, I cannot do this for you. Um, and you can say it in a nice way, but just think about that word no this week and how you can use it to better your life. <laughs> okay, uh, that's out of the road now. I would like to talk about money magic. So to start off, just letting you know, I did ask everybody on all my social media platforms if they had questions about this, if they had um, anything they'd like me to address about money magic, and I did copy everybody's questions down and I am addressing each one of them in this episode. So if I had to pick a most asked question about witchcraft, it would probably be money and prosperity tied with probably like love magic or something. Um, We all have the need for money and we need it to live in the society that we have created. And we can incorporate money magic into our practices to bring in the money that we need. (laughs) um what is money magic right like first of all let's just talk about it what is money magic there it's spells and intention work or a lifestyle to bring in prosperity in the form of monetary value to you or someone you're doing the spell for with consent of course one of my first spells i got i could not wait to do this episode because i wanted to share with you guys my first one of my first spells that i was like oh my god so One of my first spells was for money, was for money. And I was just starting out, you know, on this path. Like I had been like curious about it. I had considered myself a witch through my teen years, you know, on the down low. Um, But I hadn't really had the freedom to be able to like practice my, my witchcraft at this point was secular. And I had, um, I didn't want to have to rely on my parents to bail me out of some money issues after I dropped out of college. Like I was living in this house with some roommates and I did have a job, but it just was not enough. I desperately, desperately needed money to cover rent or I'd be forced to like move back home and like under my parents' thumb. And that's the last thing anybody wants. I think I was like 19 or 20 when this happened. Um, So I did a little candle spell. It was on my front porch while I was smoking some magical herb. (laughs) I I remember we had this like little card table outside with some really shitty chairs we found like some somebody had like left on the side of of their street for like free to pick up that it was they were crap but anyway (laughs) so I lit this um white dollar store candle that I had carved just dollar signs into with a stick literally I got this candle I'm like what am I gonna do with this thing and I remember like going off my front porch and finding a stick and it's just I just wrote dollar signs all over this candle. Um, And it was one of those little fat short ones from the dollar store. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a votive because there's no, like, glass around it, but they're little short fat ones. Anyway, I sat there and I watched it burn. And I visualized my bank account having enough money in it to cover my bills. I literally remember, like, thinking about looking at my bank account on my statement, which... (laughs) was paper statements because this was like hella long ago. So I I was envisioning like opening up my bank statement, looking at the balance and there being plenty of money for me to pay my bills and do what I needed to do. I just sat there after that and I just watched the sunrise. I watched the candle burn and I just let all my worries go and focused on that end result. It was so freaking freeing and peaceful and I'd never really experienced that at that time. I didn't even say shit. There was no chant. (laughs) There was no like me stating anything with my voice. I just lit it and went to dreaming. And within a few weeks, I had a second job to pay my bills. And I felt freaking grateful and amazing. And it was the very first time I was like, oh my God, this shit works. Like I was practicing witchcraft as a secular path at the time and really loosely because, you know, at like 1920, going out and partying is way more fun. At least when I was young, that's what I wanted to do. So it was kind of half-assing it, right? So there were no prayers, no words, um, just knowing how it would feel when it worked. And then it worked. And I wanted to share that with you because this is like, that was the simplest thing, simplest spell I, I have ever done and it worked. 
I remember going, okay, I gotta, I gotta do shit. I was really worried about getting another job. I wanted to get another part-time job to add to my income. And it was in a small town where there's not a crap load of jobs. And I had interviewed before I did this spell and I hadn't heard back. And it was kind of like to that point where it'd been enough time after the interview that I was like, well, fuck, I, I guess I didn't get the job. And then like not too long after I did the spell, it was like, you got the job oh my god it really really was it's just an amazing feeling because I was young I did not want to have to go back and live with my parents and it worked so it was super empowering so um let's talk about money magic prosperity abundance magic and all that good stuff okay um first I wanted to share that I did an Instagram poll (laughs) And I felt that this was pretty interesting. I posed the question, do you believe money spells work? So the end result was 88% said yes and 12% said no. And some that said no were witchy accounts. And that kind of surprised me. You know, I was like, oh, they're witches. Why don't they believe that spells work? And I guess I took for granted that we all just hoped or thought that our spells worked. But I had also posted on my different social media platforms to ask me what you want to know about money magic. And I'd answer them today. So after, after I did that, it really clicked with me why some people don't believe that money spells work. There were a lot of questions about how you do money spells and if you have negative self-talk and all that good stuff. So an example of one of those questions were, how do you do it without feeling like a greedy bitch? So many people are in far worse shape financially than me. I feel bad asking for more even though I have crippling debts to pay. That really put it into perspective for me. I can 100% relate to that feeling. If we have negative thoughts and limiting limiting (laughs) beliefs surrounding prosperity for ourselves, then yes, it may be difficult to get the result from the spell that you're looking for or even do a spell for prosperity for yourself. But there are always some ways to knock those thoughts out of the equation. First thing I like to do uh, when doing any spell is to write down what what I want the end result to be. And then I go bigger. What would even, what would be even better than what I want? And then I shoot for that answer. Then I work through my limiting beliefs like, this is what goes through my head. Others have it worse than me. Why should I get money from a spell or whatever I'm wanting from this spell? So I reframe all my shit talking that I'm doing to myself into something positive. So, so it would look like something like, I recognize that there are many people suffering financial difficulties, and I also deserve money and prosperity. That statement satisfies my ego to acknowledge others in need, but also states that I deserve that end result that I'm working for. And by acknowledging your negative self-talk, you're essentially calling yourself out on your bu- your own bullshit. <laughs> and it seems like a simple act, but it does a lot for our energy surrounding getting the result we want from spells when we deal with that, you know, shit talking that we do to ourselves. So I'm going to pause from questions. I I wanted to get that one out of the road first because it was something that was very important. I felt to like address right away. But let's um, talk about correspondences, color, herbs, like celestial bodies, oils, deities, all that stuff. Okay. I love to reference the complete book of correspondences by Sandra Kynes. I... Honestly, may not resonate with all the stuff in there, but it's it's still a really great book packed with shit loads of reference material for witchcraft. Like, so much. It's huge. It's the biggest book I have in my shelf. Um, if you go to the abundance section, there's a bunch of great information in that section that can help you um, make spells or you can apply to like spells and rituals that you do. Um, I'm going to include some information from that book as well as my own personal practice just to kind of give you um, like a balanced view of it, I guess. When we think of abundance and money, Virgo is the zodiac zodiac sign associated with it. Virgo is the organizer, the planner, and usually great with financial planning. So if you, you may want to do like a big money magic spell when the moon is in Virgo, or you can use that archetype to um, kind of kind of like embody and channel those qualities when doing money magic. Jupiter is the ruling planetary correspondent and generally rules over abundance and financial wealth. So you can, uh, you may want to look at your transits and what sign Jupiter is 
uh, is in at the time of your spell. Um, so there's a bunch of different apps for that. I let me let me look on my phone. I'm gonna actually pause this for a second. I'll look at my phone and I'll tell you what I have. Okay, the app I have is Daily Life with Moon Calendar, and it has all kinds of amazing shit in there, including include including. I have been having a hard time talking all day. Anyway, including the moon phase, uh, the moon zodiac. It's got so much crap in it. I highly recommend it. Again, that was, um, what was it called? Hang on. Uh, Daily life with moon calendar. I use it a lot to help plan spells and uh, intention work. Speaking of the moon, <laughs> like that like, like that transition, <laughs> speaking of the moon, lunar phases to work with money magic are the full moon and the waxing moon. The full moon represents your goals and spells completed. So channeling that energy into spells is hella powerful and very useful in money magic because you're embodying the end result already. The waxing moon is all about building and bringing to you what you are manifesting. I actually prefer doing money spells during the waxing moon. No other reason that it just feels right to me. <laughs> um, as always, like take in what info you like and toss what you don't. Um, when we think of that energetic center that influences abundance the most, most generally, we reference the sacral chakra. So... Um, this is in between your belly button and your pubic bone. So generally it's thought of as like a big bright orange spinning ball of energy in that area, like emanating from the center of your body outward. So when we nurture this energy, we become or embody that confident, passionate best self. And that is the perfect energy to create abundance, right? Like when we feel like we're badass bitches or dudes or whatever you identify as, like you feel badass. You're like, I can, I deserve this shit. I am this shit. Like it's a great energy for manifestation in general, but I really love working on my sacral chakra if I'm going to be doing any kind of money magic. Um, moving on. Um, what do we have next? I'm looking at my notes. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, what day? So um, some of the questions, that I'm just going to answer it now. Some of the questions like, what's the best day to do a, um, a money spell? So as far as that goes, um, that would be Thursday. Thursday is ruled by the planet Jupiter, which we covered a bit ago as the planet that rules money in abundance. Um, so I tend to do a lot of my intention work. So all of my like weaving the magic into the mundane stuff usually happens on Thursdays. Next, let's talk about colors. So some of the colors that are generally used for spells and money are green, gold, orange, and yellow. So what I think of is think of what colors in a cartoon would I color a pirate's treasure? <laughs> Plus green because of cash. Oh my god. So I had to pause and I had to see who was at the door and I come back and my cat <laughs> is sitting on my laptop and pressed one number for like 15 freaking lines while he sat on the cat keyboard waiting for me. This is freaking trippy. <laughs> that leads us to the next one of the things I wanted to talk about was what number is associated with money. So this particular book says eight. <laughs> so that is the number that Cotton Kitty typed in 15 lines on my computer or on this. I had a little notes thing opened up. So interesting. <laughs> okay, so I have found a lot of conflicting information about the number of prosperity. So yes, eight is one of them, but I've also read that six and five are, are as well. So I'm including eight because it's listed in this correspondence's book, but I, I don't know. I tend to go with my gut. I don't like using um, eight. Like, it just feels, it's actually the number of Saturn, which I get kind of like, I think that's like job related and I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't work with any number in particular when I work with money magic, but you are free to do whatever the heck you feel like doing. <laughs> okay, let's talk about crystals because let's be honest, that's like my favorite part of this. <laughs> money magic is how I can use my crystals. Um, some of the crystals associated with financial abundance are citrine, pyrite, uh, tiger's eye, aventurine, peridot, that's one of my personal favorites to work with for money magic, uh, tree agate, jade, malachite, and there's really a crap load more, but I wanted to list a few. Um, 
I tend to use crystals quite a bit in my personal practice. And one of the things I love to do are, is, are, good God, seriously, I need more coffee. Anyway, I like to put crystals in my like little front door area that um, are associated with financial abundance, with prosperity and all that good stuff. Because when you place things at the place that you come in and out, like the front door, that is where, that is what brings uh, into your home. So if you put like I have, what do I have there? I have a citrine sphere. I have um, a a quartz crystal that has like, that pyrite grew all over it. It's gorgeous. I have that there. I've got um, a small, very small piece of malachite. Um, Trying to think of what else. I think that's all I have up front. But anyway, I use crystals around my house like that. Um, I also use them in spell bags. I love to put them on um, my like altar when I'm doing abundance and prosperity work. It's just, they sparkle and they're colorful and I love crystals. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's move on to herbs, which is like my other favorite thing. So herbs to work with that might be right in your kitchen cabinet are allspice, basil, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, thyme, clove, rue, orange peel, and that's, seriously, there's a whole buttload of them that you can use, but those are going to be the ones that you might find in your um, kitchen cabinet other than rue. I don't know how many people keep rue in their kitchen cabinet, but for some reason I wanted to list it. Next, let's list off some essential oils. Now, I use, it's just, blah, blah, blah. I've either had way too much coffee or not enough. I have not decided. I've had one pot of coffee, which I have the small pot. So it's not like the hella giant industrial kind. It's like the regular kind, I guess. So I'm gonna take a deep breath. Hmm. All right. Essential oils that you can use in abundance work. <laughs> God. Okay. Some of them are cassia, orange, lemon, uh, patchouli, pine, myrrh, jasmine, frankincense, spruce, and there's a crap load more. Like there's so many more, but those are some common ones that you're going to find in a lot of different lists. I was going to list uh, like deities associated with, but honestly, you work with who you're called with, with what you're called for um, as far as deities. If you are working with deities, you don't have to. Um, I'm seeing so many influencers and creators putting deities in like a tiny little box. Box Like they're only good for certain topics. And I don't feel like that is my truth. So I don't want to propagate that information anymore. <laughs> yes, there are some deities that are known for abundance work. But I feel like you do you, boo. Okay. All right. So now here comes the part where I answer all of your questions. And I feel like these questions are going to help you out more than the crap I just spewed you know, in about the correspondences. So these first questions come from the WW Coven. So one person asked, um, a great money bowl spell or abundance spell when your job is on hiatus would be super awesome if that's possible. Hell yes, that's possible. (laughs) I really love a money jar paired with gratitude practice. Reasoning for me, adding a gratitude practice to this is that if you shift your mind state mindset from scarcity to abundance it's going to open you up to abundance um so first one i'd suggest is what i call an intention boil um you'll need a pot of water like half full um i love to add full moon water or um that new moon water if you have it Uh, a few tablespoons is what i use but you, you know whatever you do you Then start going through your kitchen cabinet to find abundance herbs. Ginger, cinnamon, sticks, or powder, cloves, allspice, and basil are all um, usually in your cabinet and are great for abundance. So I put like a teaspoon of each of those herbs uh, or powder in the pot. Um, Then if you have some bay leaves, which you don't have to, but if you have bay leaves, write your intention on those, um, like new job, abundance, money, or, or whatever it is, and then dump those into the pot of water and herbs. Then I stir it clockwise nine times. I really don't have an answer to why nine. I just go with it. I say say my intention um, as I'm stirring it. Something like I stir this intent or stir this with my intention of drawing abundance, new job, whatever it is to me. So mo to be. Then I put it on low and simmer for a couple hours and let my home fill with all that great aroma and steam. It's great for your sinuses too. Um, it smells freaking amazing. 
Then after a few hours, I will pour out the remaining liquid and soggy herbs across my front door like threshold area to bring that energy and end result to me. I also keep a jar um, on a shelf in my front porch area that I put change into. And I get, I get that change from like pockets when I'm doing laundry or when I'm cleaning and I find it in the couch or I clean out my car and I found all this change. All that stuff goes into a jar on the front porch. I usually will put some kind of like abundance herbs in there or crystals or and crystals <laughs> with the intention that what I put into the jar comes back to me in the bun- in the amount of abundance I desire. So continued abundance. Those are really great ones to um, kind of help fill that gap. And, and it's a great it's a great practice just to incorporate into into your like mundane stuff. I hope that helps. <laughs> Here's another from the coven. Okay. It's, they say money spells for people that suffer from, oh, the cuts from short-term working due to COVID. So I really like the two I mentioned above, but you can also do this one. Um, we've actually done this one in the coven. It uses the rune Fehu. I hope I'm saying that right. But I use a green candle. You can use white, you can whatever. Um, I carve the rune Fehu on the candle. Um, you can add whatever else you'd like to. If this is for somebody else, then write their name on it or whatever. Um, uh, light the candle and say the amount of money you need. And then say, no delay on the way to me. Say this three times. And at the end of the last chant, say now. So you're going to say, like, say I need $1,000, right? So I say $1,000, no delay on the way to me. Um, say it three times and then the last time you're going to say thousand dollars no delay on the way to me say now I love to like clap and make a buttload of noise (laughs) and say so mode it be this is for short-term fast money so if you don't get what you want or need in like a week do it again I know the, be- the book will, will tell you ooh, 24 hours, but I like to wait a, w- wait a week. Um, and this is actually from the 1001 Spells by Cassandra Eason. Um, last question from the coven is, what is your go-to money spell that is the bomb? <laughs> Honestly, it's the intention boil I mentioned a bit ago. It's something that I do probably every week. And sometimes I use the soggy stuff, the the crap that's left over. You know, I I do put it on my front, but if I have a little bit of that soggy crap, sometimes I will actually put that and let it dry again and put it in a little bag and stick it on my, um, on my front door. But it's, it's to me, that's the one that I use the most. And I feel like it works the most. And I, and I feel like the, the combination of that and working with gratitude. So I have a gratitude journal. If I'm going to do any spell, um, especially with, um, abundance, I make sure that before I do my spell, I sit down with my journal and I write five things that I am grateful for (laughs) at the moment. And, um, I think acknowledging the blessings that you do have helps bring in uh, more blessings because you have, um, less of a scarcity mindset and a more of an abundance mindset. I know that's probably not like, the answer that anyone wanted to hear, but it's, it's mine. (laughs) That's my answer. Um, okay. So these next questions are from our witchy woman friends group. So one person asked, I have a money bowl. How often should I reset my intentions? Honestly, I don't have a set of set schedule when I do that stuff. I probably should. (laughs) Probably a bad witch for that but if I can remember I do it on a waxing moon and I do it right at that new moon phase when the first like sliver shows I'll renew my intentions and stuff for my money bowl that I have it's actually a jar for me a little money jar that I have in my front front porch area uh the next question is I'd like to know some other stealth office magic for prosperity and getting customers to pay on time okay this I love because I'm so simple. I love working magic into the mundane. So you can put plants in the office that corresponded with abundance and prosperity. Keep them at the front door or at least the front area of the office so they attract money into your business. You can also use colors. um, Decorate with the colors of prosperity, green, gold, yellow, orange. This can be like in artwork, little abstract uh, statues and figurines, whatever. Maybe your signage. 
Um, one of my favorite things is to draw Fehu, the, the rune Fehu, on your windows and doors with my fingers. So, like, I will go down around my house, especially the front area, and I will, like, just draw those rune, that rune or any kind of abundant sigils that I have on the windows and on my front door. And that doesn't have to leave a mark or anything. You're doing, like, an energetic mark and intention work there. So you don't have to get your windows dirty if you don't want to. <laughs> If you don't mind, then you can like when you're um, after you spray your stuff, you know, and clean everything off, you can put your finger in there and it will leave a little bit of a mark if you want to actually leave a physical mark. Or some people um, like to use uh, salt water with a little bit of citrus um, oil in there, that lemon or orange, dip your fingers in and then draw the things on your door or windows or whatever you got going on. Um, play around with essential oil blends and diffusers in the office if you can. Um, that can help draw money in too. Just kind of get, get creative with it and see what, see what feels good because what motivates you, um, and what resonates you is what's going to bring in that money, money, money. (laughs) Okay. Next, next question. I hear a lot of people say not to think about your spell after casting. Thoughts? I totally can get where, what people mean when they say that, that not by, by not thinking about it is releasing worry and low energy surrounding your, your outcome, right? But there's something to be said for deliberate attention, intention work like meditations and I am statements after a spell for a period of time. So if I have a spell that's a long-term spell, I'm going to basically do do intention work meditations and things like that to keep reaffirming to myself that this is going to work it's totally coming this I basically am reminding the universe this is what I want (laughs) I'm keeping putting out that intention and to me it makes it stronger now that does not mean worrying about it I do not worry about my spells I um, try to visualize that they're going to work and when I do my intention work it's like I meditate on the intended result. So I meditate and imagine what it would be like if my intention was had come to fruition. I also use I am statements um, like I am provided for or I am receiving abundance. Th- those are really good ones. I feel to reaffirm to yourself, you know, and help keep that worry out because those are statements that feel safe and secure. If that, I, I hope that, I hope that helps. <laughs> Okay, next question. Hang on, let me scroll down. Okay, the next question is, my 15-year-old doesn't think that money magic is something that she can utilize since she's not working yet and can't get a raise or a bonus. Um, What can she do now to help herself in the future? So this is kind of a hard question. So first of all, 15 is a hard age to be and to be a parent of a 15-year-old. So I totally feel for you. Um, You need to keep in mind that kids at that age literally are still developing mentally. And it may be difficult for them to have a solid belief on just about anything. (laughs) And that's okay. It's what should be happening. Because at that point, they're still developing um, who they are and how they feel about things. So she can utilize that... um, spell work like that in makeup um she can draw money sigils or runes on her in her foundation before she blends it out if she uses magic or makeup good god okay hang on i'm gonna go get some coffee and i'll be right back and i get what she says about not um thinking that it applies to her so she doesn't have a vocation yet But she's 15, she's getting to that age where she's going to have to start thinking about jobs and things like that. Also, you can still use money magic because what if you have a relative that sends you money or you find money on the floor or all of a sudden you're doing your laundry and you find an extra 20 bucks in your pocket. Like those kind of things can still totally be things that you can work with. So Aside from makeup magic, she can use body wash with a scent that corresponds with abundance. I love to use orange body wash for that. Like, one, it makes me feel happy. And two, it's great for abundance. And it feeds that sacral chakra area. Um, And she can bring in abundance using cooking and kitchen witchery as well. Cook dishes with herbs in abundance and state your intention as you create the dish and as you consume or eat it. 
lots of fun mag- magical things that you can do without having to actually do a spell. Um, I find that hmm, my teen is a bit lazy and spells like, I don't know, they just seem a lot of, a lot of work for her. So working the magical into the mundane is easier for her. And I feel like in the teens, like getting them um, to find what abundance practice that they can weave into their daily life works for them and feels good sets them up for sets them up for success um as they you know move into their young adulthood and get jobs and do all that stuff so it's more about creating a practice um and bringing that abundance energy into your life than thinking about um, how or why we would do it if we don't have a job. I hope that makes sense. It was kind of a really long answer to a question. (laughs) I really hope, I really hope that that helped. The next question from the Witchy Woman Friends group is, is it possible to manifest long-term financial security through magic? Um, absolutely, I think so. When we combine the magical with the practical, for sure. If you live each day doing the things you need to do to be abundant, then that's the key to the su- to success, in in my opinion. Um, I've been, I have been doing an ongoing abundance practice with my intentions boils. I burn incense in the mornings um, for that. I have plants in my home that are. Um, that correspond with abundance and prosperity and then I also have if you have a home and you have a yard um you can plant stuff outside I have lots of plants outside my home that are um, planted specifically to bring in abundance if you have an apartment you can set out a little um one of those little uh window planters and do the same thing it's kind of you just kind of work it into whatever you got but that's how I do it so To me, I think that if you weave the magic into your life, into your mundane life, then everything and anything is possible. I know that's, I know that a lot of people are going to be like, oh my gosh, that's pretty naive and idealistic, but I do feel like maybe I'm, maybe my brain is like a kid, but I feel like anything is possible if you put enough intention and belief and work into it and, um, Like everything for me has some kind of intention in my home. Um, In this witch room, I have, uh, it's black for protection and gold for abundance and enlightenment. Um, That was specifically chosen for that or chosen for that. Um, Every part of my life in this house that I've chosen, my decor, um, the artwork, the plants, (laughs) the, the, incense that I burn, the essential oil blends that I make that I, that I, that I use during the day are all things that I weave into my, my mundane life to create a magical end result. I hope that makes sense. (laughs) Um, I, I think that it's important to, to do the mundane things. If you're going to do a magical spell, you have to follow up with the actual work. So if I'm doing a spell to get a new job, I need to go interview for new jobs. Does that make sense? So this next or la and last set of questions comes from Instagram. So the first question is, can you do money magic for others with their consent? Absolutely. <laughs> I like to use a candle that represents the quote unquote target and match the color and symbolism I carve into the candle with them. So if I am going to do that Fehu spell for a fellow Gemini, I'm going to use the, the, the money candle, which is to me, it's going to be a green candle that I carve Fehu into. And I'm also going to use a yellow candle to represent Gemini, the color. Um, and, and that's a color of the element of air. Air is associated with Gemini's. Then I carved her name into it and anything else that's suspicious. Seriously, I'm having a really hard time talking today. Somebody that knows astrology, tell me why this Gemini can't make sounds come out of her mouth in an appropriate way. Any who. (laughs) I'd carve their name into it and anything else that is specific to them. Um, When you do that, it's a form of sympathetic magic, meaning that that candle represents the person that the spell is going to affect. So I'm going to burn them at the same time. I'm going to do the spell, but I'm going to petition um, this spell to work for that person. I hope that makes sense. Um, 
Great daily practices to generate more prosperity into your life is the next question. Um, I kind of touched a lot on that above, like before, but um, I love burning an incense blend for prosperity every morning. I do intention boils probably once a week. If I have a really busy week and I forget, it's whatever, but I do those on Thursdays. Um, I plant flowers and herbs in front my front yard that are prosperity herbs. I have plants in my home as well. Um, your front door is probably, to me, the best place to do some kind of magical intention. Um, I have blessed my front door and I included in that uh, drawing sigils and runes for abundance on the outside of it. You can also put wreaths on it that have correspondences to abundance. So you can either buy or create a, a cute little wreath to put on there and put like herbs and flowers and colors and things like that that correspond with abundance. That's inviting um, abundance into your home. Um, you can also use I am statements on sticky notes. <laughs> I love to use I am statements with sticky notes on the bathroom mirrors. Um, I have them a lot of the places that are in my office. They're to remind me that I am worth abundance. I am um, experiencing abundance and prosperity, those kind of things. Um, So those are the general things that I include as well as gratitude. Every day I write at least five things that I am grateful for in my life. Some days, to be honest, I will be so bummed or pissed or butthurt that it'll literally be, you know, clothes, home, (laughs) um, uh, my bed, it'll be like the bare minimum stuff that I think of because I really am pissed off and I can't think of anything else, but I make myself write those things down. (laughs) And honestly, there are some days I'm cussing the entire time because I'm just in a bad fucking mood, but I still do it. (laughs) Um, I hope that helps. Um, The next question is, I like bay leaves. What are some ways to use them? I like drawing fehu in gold. Okay. Seriously, drawing Fehu in gold sounds magical as fuck. (laughs) Um, I love to write intentions on bay leaves and then burn them. I will burn them in my little fire safe uh, cauldron and then I release the ashes into the wind afterwards. If you live anywhere in the Midwest, it's fucking windy like nine times out of ten. So I can go out the front door usually on any day and, and the wind will take away some ashes. So I love to do that. I also use bay leaves and intention boils like I mentioned above. And also I use bay leaves when I burn loose incense. So I will often take like have my incense going and if I'm going to use bay leaves, I'm going to write my intention on it and stick it on that uh, the burning hot coals and let that um, release into the air as well. Um, What else do I do? I'm trying to think of. Oh, at. Uh, I have a small organza bag with some crystals and herbs that's hung on my doorknob. Um, I also have in that bag some um, intentions written on bay leaves. And I keep that, that just, it's just one of those little bags that you can, that you get, like if you buy anything off Etsy from a a witchy store, like most generally you're going to get a little organza bag filled with something. So I save all of those and I use them for spell bags. And one of those intentions is hanging one from my front door. And uh, bay leaves are in those. Um, the next question, how to not make bad things come from it? Okay, this one is harder to answer because I feel like if you believe that bad things happen as a result of your spells, it's a deeper issue and it and it's personal to you. I think that idea that bad things happen when we do spells for, for ourselves come from movies and TVs and TV shows, social media, and, and yes. There is a give and take there when you do spell work, but deep down, you have to believe that what you're doing is not evil or harmful to others. Um, if you have any leftover religious beliefs attached to doing spells to benefit yourself, then addressing that first is absolutely key. I'm sorry, this isn't a better answer to that, um, but I don't, I do not believe bad things happen from my spells unless I want them to. Um, you can always add the words and harm none to the ending of your spells if that, if that helps you, if that helps you reconcile with those feelings. I hope, I hope that helps and I'm sorry it's not a better answer. So, 
I, I want to point out that spell work in general starts with us and our personal emotions and energy surrounding what we want and spell work in general. It's not all the things. It's not the herbs, the corresponding colors. It's not any of that when it comes right down to it, okay? It's, at, it's us, our energy surrounding it, and our thoughts. Um, I also want to say that my spells flop sometimes. <laughs> I'm not perfect. I do not live in a magical life where money flows all the time and that like birds talk to me. Okay, sometimes I feel like birds talk to me, but Brad thinks I'm just nuts. Um, I fail. I fail a lot. (laughs) All kinds of spells flop, mostly due to self-worth issues that I have. I I have to work on my own feelings about self-worth to be more successful and I am trying. I do the things. I do... I think it's important to do the things. I meditate. Uh, I go to therapy. Um, and that's a personal choice. Therapy's not, you know, I'm not saying everybody has to go to therapy. Please don't come at me. <laughs> but I, I, I require it. Um, I deal with my shadows um, and all that shit. But it takes time to unravel years of programming and limiting beliefs. I'm 41 years old. I come from a Baptist background, which is basically doom and gloom and everybody deserves to go to hell. So even at 41 and I have, I never resonated with any part of the Christian religion. I still have every once in a while that like self-worth thing that pops up saying I'm not worth asking for this because I'm terrible and everyone's terrible and blah, 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 blah. So I have a lot to work through still. (laughs) Um, And will I, I don't know, will I ever be finished? Probably not (laughs) because uh, I'm a soul stuck in a meat suit with a brain that likes to bounce all over and take bits and pieces of things that I've heard over the years and internalize that, creating depression, anxiety, bad habits, limiting beliefs, and basic shit talking to myself. Um, until I no longer have this meat suit, I'll continue to work on myself and I'll fail at spells and that's okay. I'm human. Like, I I don't expect to always be successful. Um, I, how do I, how do I word this to make sense? I know that I'm fallible because I am human. Um, I don't expect everything to go my way, but I do have the intention that everything will go my way. Does that make sense? So when I'm doing spell work, um, I'm not going to ignore the fact that it might fail. Um, It's part of being human, (laughs) but my intention is that it will not. And I try to reinforce that intention in every way possible when I'm doing spell work. I hope that that makes sense (laughs) and that I, that I answered everybody's questions um, clearly. I know some of them probably weren't as clear as I would have liked to explain them, but I tried. (laughs) I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It's one I've been wanting to do for quite a while because it's literally is like one of the main subjects that I get asked about on social media is about money magic and prosperity. So I wanted to give this to you so that you can use and start out your new year with some badass practices, maybe do some spells and apply some of this into your life. (laughs) okay um some housekeeping um I'm trying to like make sure that I do that I end the episodes this year with what we're doing in the coven and things like that so um in the coven this week we're returning witchcrafting so we have a, a live zoom meeting in the coven and I teach some kind of witchcrafting um, craft thing. (laughs) We're doing protection on Friday. We're doing, I think we're doing an intention, like a a protection oil, a candle, um, I think an incense. We're doing all kinds of stuff. I, anyway, it's listed in the coven. If you're in the coven, you haven't seen it yet. Go to the events. I made it an event with all of the required, um, or suggested, not required, suggested ingredients and stuff so that you can, um, do some crafting with us. We do that every Friday if possible. Um, the Citrine group has their quarterly, uh, class. Um, I am doing that on the 15th and I am teaching an entire class about Sabbaths. So I'm going to go through each Sabbath, some history and lore, um, and then correspondences and how to practice and celebrate. If you would like to join the coven, um, go to witchywomanpodcast.com, click on join the coven, and you can pick any of the tiers. A dollar a month gets you into the coven and gets you into witchcrafting. We 
we have witchcrafting on Fridays. On Mondays, we have prayer circle and a card poll. So we have, we list off everybody that we want to include in our prayers for the week. Um, I have a specific prayer that I'll pick to help with the intention that week. And then I draw cards for everybody. Um, and then we have um, card draw, like, Thursday we have open card draw so anybody in the group that wants to do a live free card uh, poll for the for people in the in the coven they can do so on Thursdays um and then on Saturdays we and Saturdays we have small business Saturday and you can list all your stuff there and then also on Thursdays you can advertise in the coven if you are a reader um and you have any specials going on so I'm trying to Make sure that the Coven is a nice active group. The Witchy Woman Friends is a free group. And that's, um, you can find both of these on, on Facebook. That is a free group. It's a closed group. So if you are in the broom closet, you can join that group, post all you want, and your muggle friends aren't going to see it. <laughs> so it's a safe space. I love that space. Um, I've been working really hard to keep it safe and keep scammers out of there. We had a little bit of an issue around Christmas time with a few turds. Um, and I blocked and banned them. So, um, that's that. I want to thank Taryn, Becca, and Denaby for helping me moderate everything and admin stuff. I really appreciate it. I finally learned this year, last year, that I need help. I cannot do all the things by myself. So, um, that's all I got. Um, find me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. I'm also on TikTok now. It's really weird, but I'm trying. Um, so check me out on all of those platforms, please. And until next time, stay witchy. Bye-bye.